I would like to take the next few minutes of your time to introduce an approach of designing your curriculum that may be a, a lot more work, but it may also be what our students need to create a positive feedback loop that spirals them up into being the young adults that we all want them to be. Before I talk about the specific thing I'd like to encourage or introduce you to, I'd like to set a baseline for what we all do now. Subject curriculum design models are more widely known amongst the different curriculum design models because they are typically used in our high school setting. What makes subject design models so prevalent at the high school level today is that the types of testing that is used uh, to hold teachers and schools accountable, just like us, for our performances in the classroom, tend to lend themselves towards compartmentalizing content into subjects. Therefore, wherever you see standards-based accountability, you will also likely see a subject design model at play. This is because the strength of the design of the subject design model is its focus on essential content. Additionally, because the essential content that is to be focused on is published for all to see, public content standards, there are several publishing companies that specialize in creating materials that help teachers and schools reach their content goals. This results in a large number of resources being available to teachers to use in their classrooms, like textbooks, workbooks, lesson plans, etc. The weakness of this approach, however, is that the essential nature of the content has already been decided for the students without their input. This results in a large number of students experiencing a lack of interest and passivity. And no, telling students that they will make more money when they grow up is not a motivator at all. I would like to introduce to you the broad fields design. In a broad fields curriculum design model, we attempt to deal with that major weakness of the subject-centered design. One of the hallmarks of most subject-centered designs is that subjects are very compartmentalized, like mentioned earlier. In other words, there is little to no integration between subjects. This results in students not understanding how subjects legitimately interact and overlap. An example from my own classroom is that my physics students don't really realize the reason that they took trigonometry was so that they could understand specific physics problems. Even with my direct support, physics students struggle to apply mathematical concepts in the physics classroom, despite the fact that they are able to do so in the mathematics classroom. In order to mitigate this weakness, Broadfield's curriculum design models attempt to group content areas together that have some natural overlap. Examples of such subjects that could be grouped together are math and science, history and literature, or philosophy and psychology. Broad field curriculum design attempts to provide more breadth of, understand of understanding to the student without sacrificing depth of knowledge, because the weakness of integrating too many disciplines is not being able to cover topics in sufficient detail. To go back to the example from the math and science crossover, our colleague Gary Pope lent us his homemade air-powered rocket launcher. On his advice, I had my physics students build their own rockets out of construction paper and cardboard, as well as any trinkets that they could find that they think would be useful. Using the math skills from Gary's own cl uh, math class, we calculated how high the rockets went up in the air. My role was to organize a tournament for the students to compete in with the rockets for a little added personal investment. We also dragged out Nate Bohr's D period freshman class to spectate the tournament to drop the idea that physics and math can allow you to do some fun things if you do the work. By taking the essential content from math and physics in this example, and packaging them in a way that allows the student to orient their own interest toward the objectives that we've laid in front, the student naturally moves toward the goal of their own accord. 
and any self-autonomous movement is going to be more powerful and more beneficial to the student than anything we could force our students to do or assignment we could force them to complete. So as we move forward, I'd please encourage you to consider taking time to collaborate, not within your department, but outside of your department, and share and further ideas that could allow you to integrate what you already do in your classroom with something that someone else already does in their classroom with the intent of making the experience for our students more integrated. More integrated human beings are more successful human beings and that is what we want. Thank you for your time.